lift up your hands and just begin to bless the name of the Lord God Almighty. He's a faithful God. Come on, in this new month, lift up your voice and just bless him. Give him praise. Let praise come out from you unto God as you know it and as you can. Go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and bless him. Go ahead and exalt him. Let praise come out from inside of you. The Bible says you are created to show forth his praise. Bless him. He is a faithful God. Glorify him. He is an everlasting father. Exalt him. He is the prince of peace. He is the giver of life. He is the fountain of living water. He is our king, our God in whom we trust. He is our refuge, our defender, our protector. We give you praise. We give you praise, mighty God. We bless you, Spirit of the living God. We worship you, my Father. Thank you, you are God and you are God alone. You are God and you are God alone. You are God alone. You are God alone. Mana de devos. Nina na baba shanda la kaba. Sele de devos. Nikan de reba. Shanda like de vos. Sinde de ya baba baba. We give you praise. You are God alone. You are God. There is none to be compared with you. Be glorified. Be magnified. Be exalted. We worship you. We bless you, Lord. Ninde le kura masante. Nikra ante liro moshtaliamba. Let praise come from within you. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. You are worthy of my praise today. Mandroshkele rebo santa kana masakandorobu. Blessed be your name. Thank you, my Father. To you be all the glory. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Redeemer, you are worthy to Yes, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy. magnify you. We exalt you. You are God alone. We bless you. Thank you for the privilege to have you as our God. We bless your name. You have been faithful throughout the year. Since the year began, you have been God and you are still God and you are God alone. Your faithfulness has been from everlasting to everlasting. Lord, you deserve all the glory 
My father, you deserve all the honor. You deserve all the praise. In fact, you deserve all the worship. Be thou exalted. We bless you. Who is man that thou art mindful of him? Huh? Father Lord, you have been so careful for us. You have so much been our Jehovah Jireh. Father, take all the glory. Please take all the honor. We kneel and bow before you. Acknowledging you as our God. Our Savior and our Redeemer. And the one who paid the price that no man can pay. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. In this service today, Lord, let the joy of your people be full. In this service today, Lord, let great and effectual doors of blessing be opened unto them. And Father, I pray that in the name of your dear son, Jesus Christ, please take care of the adversary on the other side. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh -uh, shout it louder. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please be seated. Uh, before we go into the word this morning, uh, I want to quickly just announce to us, uh, you know, in our calendar for the year, we were supposed to have uh, the empowerment program uh, uh, last Saturday or past Saturday. It was shifted for some reason. Praise God. And uh, so we had to put it into next, uh, uh, this Saturday coming. Praise the Lord. Uh, of course, definitely you are, we are supposed to, in, let's invite people to the program and we are going to pray. Amen. We will be praying. And uh, the theme of the program is with God. Hallelujah. I thought you'd be excited about it. Amen. Amen. With God. That thing that is before us as a church and as a people, as individual, with God, with God, everything can work out well. And for you, it shall work out well in Jesus' name. I want us to personally make it a date and an appointment with God and also to encourage our members and those who are not members to just come and pray. Hallelujah. And of course, uh, you, as for those of you who have been following in our group, the theme for the fasting period, which is also our theme for this month, is fruitfulness. Praise the Lord. And uh, God will be uh, fruitfulness in every areas of life shall be possible with you. Amen. Your amen is somehow, praise God. I say shall be possible with you. Amen. Fruitfulness has to do with every areas of your life. Praise the Lord. And with God, fruitfulness shall be possible for you. And as a church, fruitfulness shall be possible for us. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is in the fruitfulness we find the blessing. And the blessing of protection comes when God, when God sees fruitfulness. Because that is his expectation. He said, touch it not for a blessing is in it. So I decree that in the name of Jesus Christ, this month spanning into, as we enter into the year, God will be sound, God will be, will be sounding from heaven. And will be declaring concerning you and your household that touch it not for a blessing is in it. Because of the blessings of God upon your life, you are untouchable by the enemy. Praise God. So please, let's, let's prepare our mind and our heart, and especially with ourselves. Praise God. So that we can come and pray uh, together. The Lord will hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Like announced to you before, uh, this uh, week we are uh, focusing on, thing, on, on, on sanctification and holiness. Praise God. 
Uh, that's our focus this month. Last week, the Lord did not let us finish pray, thanking him before he began to uh, direct us concerning the remnants. And on Thursday, we began to pray, and God gave us a word that the remnant we're going to be, are going to bear fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Awesome word. The remnant, they will still bear fruit. They will take root downward and bear fruit upward. Hallelujah. And that, uh, that was a direct answer to prayer. Hallelujah. That's why I know that you will bear fruit. And the rest that you have in every area of your life, they will bear fruit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. Uh, today is Thanksgiving. But the Lord has a word for somebody here. If that is you, shout hallelujah. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, the word of God will bear fruit in your life. Amen. Heavenly Father, breathe upon your word this hour and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' precious name. Please, I'd like you to walk to somebody and tell that person, believe me, you are blessed. Just go and tell the person, prophet. Tell them, believe me, you are blessed. <laughs> Did the person say amen? Did the person say amen? Amen. Believe me, you are all blessed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Believe me, you are so blessed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, shout it loud. I am, I am blessed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God said for somebody here, help we come early for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I receive it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The, I want to share with us what I tie to the dresser of the vineyard. The dresser of the vineyard. So I was studying last night and God was taking me apart, just showing me some mysteries in his word. And this particular mystery just came up and uh, it just piqued my interest and I knew that this is what the Lord wants me to speak about today. And I trust that it will bless somebody here particularly in the name of Jesus Christ. So I, I would like you to be very attentive and I, am, I know, I know. There is somebody here that this word is meant for. And it will turn your life around even as it moves you to pray. You know, you take it in to pray in this fasting period and pray. And the Lord God Almighty will intervene in Jesus' name. Amen. The dresser of the vineyard. How we know we, we all know what a vineyard is? Call it a farm if you want. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so we're looking at the dresser of the vineyard. Hallelujah. Let's turn our scripture to uh, John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I'd like to read from verse 1 to 8. John chapter 15, 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every tree in me that beareth not, beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he does what? 
he budget it. You may write somewhere there, sanctification. He budget it. That why is he purging it? That it may bring forth more fruit. It was designed to bring for but it should bring more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. He said, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can we can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth what? Much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Now, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. You will not wither. Amen. Gather them and cast them into fire, and they are burned. Men will not lead you to the place of hellfire. If, verse 9, if ye abide in me and my word abide in you, ye shall ask what you will. May God grant you what you will. And it shall be done unto you. So I declare to somebody, it shall be done unto you. And verse 8, the final verse. Herein is my father glorified. That ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciple. The Lord bless the reading of his word. In Jesus' name. You qualify to be his disciple when you bear fruit. Now, I brought out some, I noticed some things about this, uh, this few verse that we just read. And I want to just draw your attention to it briefly. The first thing there is that it takes a purging to bear fruit. It takes a purging to bear fruit. If we, if you don't give yourself to be purged, oh, somebody can say I'm clean. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not. Everything is. I'm okay and everything. <laughs> uh, maybe you are not. Your target is not bearing fruit. But if your target is bearing fruit and to bear much fruit, then you must give yourself to a purging. The Bible says, purge me and I shall be. Purge me and I shall be. Whiter than snow. So it takes a purging to bear fruit. So this month, as we rejoice what God has done for us last month and the past months, and as we get into this month, please, and as we into fasting, at this time, let's give ourselves to all manner of purging. Let God purge us. I mean, you and you purge yourself too. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because a purging has two edge. God may, if, 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 you know, if God may purge you, and you too, you can decide to depurge yourself. Praise God. And decide to turn the purge into something else. You will put the Bible says it's a dog that returns to his vomit. A pig, after you have cleaned him up, he will be looking for how to go back into that uh, thing again. Number two point that I want to draw your attention to, I mean that purging you can see in verse two, clearly in verse two there. He said he will purge it so that it can bear, bear fruit. And the second thing is that it takes, it takes you abiding in him while he abides in you in order to bear fruit. It takes you to abide in him and he in you in order to bear fruit. You can see that in verse 5. I am divine, he are the branch. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Or without me, he can do nothing. So we, we, de- we must be abiding in him and allow him to abide in us practically, not just by words. People must be able to tell what is inside of you. 
and be able to know that mm, this person I was listening to a man of God said he went somewhere uh, and you know passport stuff going to travel or something like that praise the Lord and he said the, the, the you know the person just looked at him and said you, you I think you are a pastor and he was not wearing a collar in the neck he was no just a normal shirt and trouser he wore praise God and he was like, what makes you think I'm a pastor? You, the way I'm seeing you, you are a pastor. Praise God. No tag, nothing. May the world see Christ in you. Amen. So, it is important. And if you see, you see, some people even say that there are some people that have been with Daddy Gio for some time. They are beginning to resemble him. Praise God. And there's this proverb that when you stay long inside them, um, when a leaf stays long in um, soap, the leaf becomes a... Uh, it, it, and the, the, even the disciples, because they have been long with Jesus Christ, they look at them and say, you look like one of those who had been with Jesus. So they call them Christians. So, so what is in you should not stay inside you. It must be reflectable. So that is the that's why the Bible says, "Let your light so shine." You are the light of the world. That light came from Him. So He said, "Let your light so shine." To men, so that men can come to the brightness of your eyes. So you must abide in Him this period and forevermore. Amen. The third thing is that it takes the word of God in you for God to abide in you. If God must abide in you, you must take in the word of God. The word of God must be dwelling inside of you. You must be eating. Have you heard when people say you are what you eat? How many, it is not how many words do you quote. How, how many of the words is abiding in you? How, how practical are you about it? And you find that in verse 7. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. There is a benefit, a privilege, a benefit for you when you abide in him. And one of those things is that you will ask and he will give. That means when you ask for fruit, he will give it to you. I thought I would hear an amen. When you ask for what is according to his will for your life, he gives it to you. Throughout this month, as we sought to seek the face of God, he will, get, he will give you what you want. And he will give you exactly what you should have. Because sometimes the thing we are chasing after is just out of the will of God for our lives. And that's why we get it and we have many, many hearts and fieldiness and all kinds of things comes to it. And that's just to mention a few things that I want to... But there's one thing I need to also let you understand that God expectation and identity of those that would be his disciple is to glorify him with their fruit. That caught my attention. God wants you to glorify him not without a fruit. Not without a fruit. You, you see, this is why he said that you must not come before me empty. You, you, that does not glorify God to come empty. That you come is not enough. He wants to, he wants to see you come in bringing in your sheaves. I pray from henceforth, emptiness will not be known with you. Look at it in verse 8. He said, hearing is my father. I pray that your life will glorify God. Hearing is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit, not just fruit, much fruit, so shall ye be my... He said, that is how I know my disciples. 
the one that bear fruit. When they glorify me, they don't glorify me empty. When they glorify me, they, they, they have fruits in their hand. Hallelujah. Not only the fruit in their hand, they have the fruit of the spirit with which to glorify God. When you lack the fruit of the spirit, how do you glorify God? So, those fruits in your hand, those fruits that should be inside of you, the fruits of the Holy Spirit inside of you, they must be available. And that is how God is glorified. Not everybody who comes to church comes to glorify God because they have not checked the details they have to meet before they glorify God. And then their praise and their thanksgiving becomes empty. Yours will not be empty. I said, yours shall not be empty. Amen. I'm talking about the dresser of the vineyard. You see, God, God took man in Genesis and placed him in a garden and he told the man to dress it. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 14. Genesis 2, 14. And the Lord God took the man. The Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to do what? To dress it and to keep it. That was the first Adam. He was the dresser of that vineyard. That garden, that farm. His job was to dress it and keep it. Dress and keep. May God dress you up. Uh -uh. May God make your destiny be a destiny of color. I said, may the Lord beautify your life. He was the dresser and the keeper of the garden. His job was to keep it. You know the Bible says he that keepeth his is neither slumber nor sleep. His job is to keep it and to dress it. Make it fine. Make it attractive. Make it sweet. Make it very unusual. But I'd like to show you uh, two scenarios that will help you pray. Hallelujah. That will help you begin to ask God a positive question that will direct a benefit unto you. Watch this. Let us look at in Mark, Mark 11. Mark 11. Mark 11 and verse 12. Look at this scenario. You know, the first Adam had trees and he, he to keep and to dress. That's what he does. I want to read from verse uh, 12 to 14. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, talking about Jesus, and seen a fig tree afar off, having what? Leaves, are you all there? Having leaves, he came. Ah, when God comes, may he find. Amen. He came. If happily he might find anything thereon, and when he came to eat, he found nothing. I pray, may God found a lot with you. Amen. He found nothing thereon. And when he came to eat, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of fig was not yet. And Jesus answered and said to it, No man eat of thee hereafter forever. And the disciple had that cause. That means the disciples were not far away. They had that cause. Note that. The, there was somebody around. And they had that cause. They did not even pity the fig. They 
Jump to 19 for me, please. 19, verse 19 to 22. And when even was come, he went out of the city, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the root. Your root will not be dried up. And uh, Peter calling to remember, saying unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou causest. You see, we, he is withered away. That one, we had you cause it, but we can see the effect of it. It is withered away. It is without a way. Remember, remember, in Joel, in Joel, the Bible says, the reason why there's a withering of men is because they lack joy. Because joy has left men. You will not lose joy. Uh -uh. You will not lose your joy. Amen. And Jesus answered and said to him, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Now, now, please understand that this tree had a particular situation and Jesus came to it and he was, you know, maybe, maybe that God, the Bible says if he may happily, fight, that is, there will be something in the, with this tree that will make Jesus happy. My question to you, because the Bible says here are trees of righteousness, is what is with you and what you, are you engaged in or what are you active with that Jesus is happy with? Will he find it when he comes? When he wants to come to attend to your prayer and wants to answer your prayer, when he comes, is he going to find what will make him happily give you the answer to your prayer? I looked at this situation of this particular tree and I, I began to pray. Instead of being sorry for the tree, I began to pray. And I, and I pray that the intercessor will move you to pray also. But that is one scenario. I want to show you another scenario in Luke. In Luke. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. I want to read from verse 6. Mm hmm Jesus was speaking a parable here. I want to read from verse 6 to 9. He said, he spake unto uh, also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came, just like Jesus came. And sought fruit thereon, just like Jesus sought fruit thereon. And he found none. But watch this. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard. Everybody say dresser of the vineyard. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard. Behold, these three years I came seeking fruit on this fig tree. And I found none. Cut it down. You shall not be cut down. Amen. I said you shall not be cut down. Your destiny will not be cut down. Amen. Your project will not be cut down. Amen. Your vineyard shall not be cut down. Amen. No tree, no tree under your spiritual covering shall be cut down. Amen. He said, cut it down. Why cumbere it in the ground? And watch this, verse 8. And he answered and said to him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. I looked at these two scenarios and it moves me to pray more. Hallelujah. Amen. There was something with this tree that was not available in the other tree that was cursed. Hallelujah. And I believe that any believer that does not have what this particular tree has, that particular, that deep, whoever is that person is in trouble. 
In this particular scenario in, in Luke 13, you can see the activity of the dresser of the vineyard. The dresser of the vineyard was, was not present in that other tree that was cursed, that Jesus cursed. The disciples were there, but they were not the dresser of the vineyard. They had the cause, but they could not do anything about the cause. They only recorded it. Everyone that is recording the cause against you, God will disappoint them. Because you shall not be cursed. Can I hear a better amen? amen? The disciples, they had it. And if you read that scripture, the Bible says that it was not even the time for that thing to bear fruit. But there was nobody to intercede. The dresser of the vineyard was available for this tree. And I began to cry to God, Father, let the dresser of my vineyard be always with me. Let the dresser of the vineyard, my own vineyard, let the dresser not, not go to market when you come. Where was the dresser of the vineyard of that particular tree? Who would have spoke on the behalf of that tree? Where was that dresser of the vineyard? Who is the dresser of the vineyard? The dresser of the vineyard is an intercessor. You can see him, he was interceding. He knew that this thing was going to go, but he interceded. I pray that your intercessor will rise up on the occasion for you. The dresser of the vineyard was an initiator of mercy. Hallelujah. Mercy was available, but you see, even Christians was available concerning the other particular tree, yet there was nobody who can speak mercy. Even though they were Christians. There are Christians that don't understand the word mercy. If anything wants to happen to you, well, let it happen to you. God, Kasham. God, Kasham. Eh? Unko. But the dresser of the vineyard who had been given the, the, the mandate from heaven to dress and to keep, to ensure that this thing is kept. To ensure that this thing remains beautiful. Even when Satan is trying to throw things that will not make it beautiful, even when Satan is trying to throw things that will not make it even last, the dresser of the vineyard is there. May your dresser of the vineyard, your vineyard, be available for you always in the name of Jesus. Amen. Who is the dresser of the vineyard? He is a giver of life. Hallelujah. Because at that moment, death was on the way for that particular tree in chapter 13 of, 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 of Luke. Death, because the man of the house have said, cut it down. The time of this thing is over. Death is the time. It's time to die now. Cut this thing down. It's wasting my time. It's rough, rough making my vineyard messy. <laughs> but the man, inter the dresser of the vineyard intervened. I, I, I paused here to remember this woman who was caught in the very act. And they brought the woman. That day was supposed to be her death. And then at that moment, that, the, the, they now brought him to the dresser of the vineyard. The one who keep Israel. Hallelujah. And then we call, we have every reason to cut this woman down. But what say you? But the dresser of the vineyard came up and said, uh uh, uh uh. No, no. I came to give life. Hallelujah. He, he, you, would, you should have killed her before you brought her to me. But, 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 the, but, but for the fact that you brought her to me, I'm giving her a new life. In the name of Jesus Christ. What is designed to destroy you, God will turn it into life. Amen. Who is the dresser of the vineyard? He is a preserver. The one who can preserve. Hallelujah. Is it as if everything is going to finish? Is it as if it's not going to happen? Is it as if this thing is going to die? Is it as if that it, he, 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 that's why he said you are the salt of the earth? He is able to preserve life. He's able to preserve your finance. He's able to preserve your health. Is your health failing? The preserver is able to preserve your health. Because from the beginning, he has designed divine health for you. He has designed your joy. He has designed your peace, your progress. He has designed your wealth. But is he looking as if the wealth is not going to be there again? The Lord said he's going to preserve it. Amen. The dresser of the vineyard. Who is he? He is the mediator. 
the one who mediates. Hallelujah. Who is the one that the one that can settle matters. Hallelujah. Who can sit down and say, okay, because you know the Bible says he is the judge of the whole earth. Glory be to God. Is the mediator because the issue between the tree and the man who was the viad, there was somebody there who is going to settle the matter. I say, okay, this is how we are going to settle the matter. It shouldn't settle in cutting down. It should settle in a, you know, there must be a reconciliation. Hallelujah. The dresser is a reconciliator. Calabrosteria. He is a reconciliator to reconcile the differences in people, the, the, the differences between you and your blessing. Whatsoever that has been causing uh, 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 a problem between you and your fruitfulness and your peace and your joy, the reconciliator is stepping in now. Yeah. I said the reconciliator is stepping in now. Yeah. Who is this uh, dresser of the vineyard? Thank you, Jesus. He is also the giver of time. Somebody here, you think you are losing time? God is going to make you gain time. Can I hear a believing amen? He's a giver of time. You know, time is one thing that no man can give. You remember Ezekiah? It was his time to go. But the Bible says that because he had some credit with God, God gave him more time. Hear me, God will give you more time. Concerning that matter, some people, it is just a, more time, a little bit more time to make it good. A little bit more time. It looks like it is over. A little bit more time. But there's only one person that can give you that little bit more time is the dresser of the vineyard. May yours be available for you. Amen. That day was his time to die. But, God, but the dresser of the vineyard said, eh, give it more time. One more year. Twelve months. And you know the funny thing I discover when he proposed more time, the 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 man of the vineyard did not argue. He didn't say that twelve months is too much. Eh, one month, one month is enough. Ah, what twelve months ago? What? Look, whatever the dresser of your vineyard says on your behalf stays. God does not argue with it. God was young. If, he, if the dress of the said, give it five years, that's how it's going to be. No argument. Hallelujah. The dresser of the vineyard is a giver of time. And that dresser of vineyard, what, is, what does he do again? He is our, your advocate. He advocated. Hallelujah. He advocated. Because by the time you look at it, he, he said, okay, maybe the, the, the good thing is this. This particular tree, it seems that the dresser of the vineyard was saying, uh, uh, well, uh, my lord, uh, uh, I think uh, a doctor will understand this thing. If I did it wrongly, we all this lawyer, praise the lord. My Lord, uh, well, I, you, are, you are correct, but uh, you see, there is a tree. There's one thing I've been watching, you know. You said three years. You are just expecting fruit. But I've been watching, I've been watching. There, there, is, there is something we have still not done to really conclude that this thing should die. He, we, we are not happy. We, let me. Okay, you know what? You relax. Since this fruit you are interested in, let me dig about it. One. And I will dung it. And when I dung it, after I've done another one, eh, then maybe you can now say you want, to, you want to cut it down. Hear me. Somebody here, your advocate will show up for you. Yeah. The advocate has been watching, not just watching, he's watching to solve your challenge. The, the dresser of the vineyard, he watches to solve, not to watch and judge and see how you are going to fall or die. No, he watches over you to begin to check what more should I do to this, my fig. What? There must be something else. And then he found something. That's why he's the advocate. And when he said that to the man that owns the vineyard, he said, okay, that's true. We have no 
digged about it. Uh, we have not done it. You are right. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Praise God. Because if they have done it before, have we not been doing it for three years? He's an advocate. The dresser of the vineyard. These are all the blessings and the privileges that this particular, uh, this other tree that was caused did not have. They just had cause and later they saw the result. They even came to announce, the thing has happened, no? it has happened, cause. You caused and it has happened. Hey, yeah. Nobody will tell you sorry again. I said, you will not be too sorry again. They will not see occasion to tell you sorry. Amen. So, what he does is to fertilize, enable, anoint. He offers empowerment for fruitfulness to the fig tree. That other tree lacked it. Praise God. The Bible says you are the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. God planted you. I thought I would hear an amen. amen. But you see, ask yourself, are you a tree or a trick? Hello. Ask yourself, are you a tree or a trick? Are you fake? Because a tree, they have their own characteristics and behavior. But when you don't behave like a tree and you behave like a trick, then you don't have access to this dress, dresser of the vineyard. God doesn't see you as a tree. One of the fakes around. <laughs> have you not heard from scripture? The Lord knoweth them that are his. Let him that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. The Lord knoweth them that are his. The Lord knows. In all this I know that I'm a child of God. It God knows the one that is his child. Praise God. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And that's more important than you knowing who you is to. Praise God. It's more important. So it's the Lord that determines the one that are his. He's the one that will come in the days of his jewel and separate those who are serving him and those who are not serving him. He's the one that can do that one. Nobody can do that for him. He's the judge of all. Praise God. I said praise God. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Let in everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity so that you can become his own. Depart from iniquity so that you can become his planting. Depart from iniquity. So the Bible says that uh, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold, a particular type of tree, uh, the vessels of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some unto dishonor. I pray that you be found to be a vessel unto honor. Amen. So the Bible now says, I'm reading 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 18 to 20. 2 Timothy 18 to 20. The Bible says there, it said, If a man therefore purges himself, purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel. So, what qualifies you to be a vessel of honor is a purging. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and made for the master's use, and prepared unto every good works. 